Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another long-term update for you. I'm gonna, I try and do these in mass form. I know sometimes for specific knives I'll do a single long-term update, but uh, we're doing you know, a mass one here today. Got some pretty cool stuff. I realize it's been a while since I did one of these, went back and looked, and man, there's some stuff I have not updated you on. Everything here I've had for at least uh, three or four months. Uh, I think most of these are actually well over four months. And uh, stuff that I just want to let you know how they're doing how it is and the stuff that I've kept around. So even just the fact that I still have these is a really good sign that I do like them because, or I have a specific purpose for them, uh, because I don't, honestly, I rotate the collection a whole lot to keep you guys happy. Got to feed the beast and I can't, I can't uh, afford to keep everything that I get, unfortunately. So here we go. These are in no particular order at all of, you know, favorite to least favorite, anything like that. Just going to pull out the knife, give a few facts about it really quickly, and then uh, talk uh, talk about how it's held up and any problems I've had, things like that. Any changes I've made to it, stuff like that. Uh, first up, we have the Mass Drop Ray Laconico Keen. Uh, these cost about, I think they start like 150 bucks. I think it was a bit more for these uh, speed hole things. I don't recall, actually. They are available for pre-order right now on Mass Drop. That's always a thing with Mass Drop where you're, is it going to be available again? Is it not? Well, the, the Keen is definitely one that's going to be in there what they're calling their production, you know, status, and almost all of their knives are now. If it doesn't say a limited run, then it's going to be back again, is a pretty much what they've told me to assume uh, when you look at their stuff. I really, really, really like this knife. It is probably my favorite Mass Drop collaboration. Uh, it is, as I said, designed by Ray Laconico, made by Keen, or made by a Wii. Um, Use the S35 VN steel, as you can see there, full titanium. This is the plain. I debated between this and the bronze finish. I kind of wish I'd gotten the bronze finish. It looked a bit more crackly. Maybe it would hold up better. As you can see, this has gotten some snail trails. I expected that, but it always still does make you does make you a bit sad. Um, <laughs> I I debated between the holes or the not holes. This is a very typical Ray Laconico thing. Most of his knives have holes of one form or the other. But they usually have the option not to have them, but uh, this is a very Ray Laconico kind of thing. The stuff I love about this is just, it's simple. The ergos are great. The blade is fantastic. Very thin behind the edge. Very slicey. And other than the uh, scratches, it has been nigh on perfect. The action is just fantastic. Really, really love this thing. It's w one of my favorite knives that I own. Uh, this will I'll probably never go anywhere unless I have the option to get one and another finish that I like. Because sometimes, you know, Mass Drop, maybe they'll offer a different finish or something. Uh, love it. Absolutely great. I love just a little Ray Laconico up on the spine. And the, the Mass Drop billboarding isn't as bad as usual. I actually don't really mind it, but some people get very upset about that. But, uh... Yeah, this has held up great. Not really too many huge uh, updates on this because it's just it's just been excellent. Uh, next up, we have this is the CRKT Pilar, but this is the Benchmade exclusive S thirty five VN version. Uh, it does not say S thirty five VN on it. You just have to know by that uh, model number. The what five three one one CF two is the S thirty five VN. Uh, this was seventy dollars. They are not available anymore. They have gone now to, uh, now Blade HQ's exclusive is a D2 model, a D2 blade with this exact same scale and stuff for 50 bucks, so a little bit less expensive. Um, not quite as great as steel, but a little bit less expensive, so I can't complain about that. Uh, this one has been modified. Most, uh, it seems like most, if you watch YouTube, you think every PLR is modified. <laughs> they're a cheap knife and they're awesome and people just really like to mess with them. Especially the uh, stainless steel, you know, the one with the stainless steel scale because it's super easy to, you know, to change the color and do all kinds of stuff too. And, you know, uh, but this one's been modified inside. You can't see it. It does have the Parsons Blade Works uh, Phosphor Bronze Washers in it and it's very dirty. Because I do carry it a fair bit. It's this is a very common backup knife I carry. Um, they're great. Eight fifty, eight dollars fifty cents. They are sold out right now, but I know he's getting them back in stock. I will try to remember to link to that down below. But it's ParsonsBladeWorks.com. It's not hard uh, to remember. Uh, it has improved the action. They normally come on Teflon washers. Uh, not not dramatically so though. I will say it's not like a night and day. Oh my gosh, it's so much smoother now. But it is definitely smoother, and it's a bit more flickable than it was with the stock uh, Teflon bushings, especially on this particular one. This particular one wasn't as flicky as my, uh, actually I gave 
my original plain old one to my son and and his is still probably a bit flickier than this that one was just really great um but this is still much flickier than it was and it's on i just prefer the phosphor bronze i know they're going to hold up longer and as you can see by all the dirt that was in there this isn't a knife that i take care of very well <laughs> it's just kind of a backup knife and uh yeah it's kind of beat up along the back here um but yeah, i still love i still love everything about the pilar I love the ergos, stuff like that. I've thought about doing, uh, since I have three of them in the house now, between this and my large Pilar and my son's maybe doing a little... I've done those Ode 2 videos before. I did one for the Para 2, did one for the 940. I think I did one for the Manix 2. I'm about doing an Ode to the Pilar. Somebody let me know if you want to if you want to see that. But yeah, Jesper Voxnay's design, I always say my hand twin. Everything he makes fits my hand so perfectly, and this is absolutely no exception. Definitely one of my favorite small knives. Little bitty thing. This is what, a two, yeah, two and a half inch blade. Great little knife. 2.4, I think it is actually, if I remember correctly. Uh, next up, we have the Kershaw Atmos. Yep, I still have it. Uh, budget knife from Kershaw. Uh, $33, I think these costs. It's this one has what an interesting life the last month or so. Um, I did carry it a fair bit for the first couple months that I had it. It's just so damn light. It's like what I think it's it's like I think it's dead on two ounces if I remember correctly, and it's classy looking. And I carried it a lot. Eight CR thirteen MOV steel. Nothing to write home about. This is a Chinese made Kershaw, but the quality in this one has been excellent. It's always been good. You know, blade centering's great. All that stuff. D10 has always been perfect. It's just been a great little knife. Uh, but one of the days I carried it, I uh, this was probably about a month ago, I emptied my uh, emptied my pockets and I put it in a little, little tray by our front door and I set it there and I forgot about it and uh, the whole fan family has been using it. So <laughs> it was down there and everybody's using it as a letter opener and all that kind of stuff. And um, uh I just actually reclaimed it a couple weeks ago. I realized that's where it was, uh, but and it and it did need to be sharpened. But it had been put through some abuse by my fam my non knife family using it for all kinds of stuff. As you can see, I did sharpen it, but I didn't clean the blade off very well. Um, all the packages that came through the door, this got used to open. All the letters that came through the door, this got used to open. And I did have to sharpen it after all that, but uh, it did get put through a, a fair bit of use and abuse during that time, and it's held up really well. It actually was probably a pretty good way to uh, to to give it a bit of a test is let let non knife people use it for a month and uh, everybody seemed to really like it. My daughter really really likes it. I'm actually thinking about getting her getting her. now they come in colors they come in like a blue one or a green one. My daughter really loves camo so I don't know might might even get her a green one or something like that. But uh, yeah, this has been a great little knife. I still really like it. Sinkovich design for thirty three bucks. That's uh, that's excellent. Nice deep carry pocket clip. It's a great little knife. Very. Very, very happy with the Atmos. Uh, next up, this one I have a bit to talk about. This is the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atlas. This is their smaller slip joint. They make this and the Viator. Uh, you can one hand open it and all that stuff. Um, this has just been fantastic. I really love S35 VN again. One of my favorite steels and it's just razor sharp, has remained so. I've touched it up a couple times because I do carry this a lot. This is sort of my, uh, I carry this a lot when I'm uh, when I have gigs and stuff, and I don't want to have a, a big giant knife with me. And uh, I carry this one a lot. So, and this one also gets I get handed to people a lot and stuff because it's the one that's in my pocket, you know, when I'm out and about a lot. And uh, it's, I got the carbon fiber scales and this million different scale options. These aren't horribly expensive, hundred twenty four dollars for uh, you know basically handmade knife. That's 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 pretty. I mean, they use machines, but you know, hand assembled, hand finished, all that kind of stuff. Uh, wonderful knife really like it. I like it so much that uh, I'm going to uh, Germany, my usual yearly trip that I do for business over there. And usually I take two or three knives with me that are legal for over there. Um, this is the only one I'm taking this year. I can't, there's nothing else in my collection that I want to take and that I, that I think I would need. And I don't see anything coming on the horizon before I leave in a couple weeks. And I think I'm going to be perfectly happy with this one. I mean, let's not lie to ourselves. I'm going to buy one or two while I'm over there. Uh, I have a free day. I've already, I'm going to a couple knife shops in Frankfurt and checking those out, but it's, this is just a, a great little slip joint. And I like it so much. I will say I sold my Viator. There are other, they do a, uh, a larger slip joint. Um, 
and I, I did sell it. Uh, it. I liked it a lot. I, I liked it in my hand better than this. It's, it was even slicier than this. Uh, but I just, when I had this, I just didn't, I didn't need, need the big three inch slip joint. So uh, this is the one that stayed and I love it. It's great. The Vider is awesome too, but, um, and I'll probably replace the Vider at some point. But I, for now, very, very happy with this. And yeah, only knife going to Germany with me. So that's saying something. Uh, next up, Boost Blade Smoke. Uh, I still love this thing. I chased one of these for a year. Finally got it, what, three and a half months ago. And, oh, I just love this thing. Again, S35 VN Steel. Um, titanium. This is the actual one from Boost. At the same time, uh, Blade HQ came out with a carbon fiber scale version. I had already ordered this, but I'm not disappointed that I had. I kind of like the look of the full tie. The carbon would have been cool too, but you know, I like the dog on it and stuff. And the action is just so good. Definitely the best front flipping action of just about anything. I would put the much less expensive real steel metamorph close to it, but it this is easier to open for sure. But as far as drop shuttiness and all that, and you can, if I can do it now, you can you know thumb open this too you know with that hole, and I believe I can thumb flick it. Yeah, you can thumb flick it all that stuff. But I almost always use the front flipper because I like it. Uh, just a great slim, awesome little uh, you know gentleman's knife. It has had no problems whatsoever. Uh, I've you know. Stropped it a couple times. I don't think I've ever even had to go as far as what I would call touching up. Pocket clip has worked great. Everything's been really good with this knife. Really like it. Uh, these next two are, I'm going to do these two together as much as I can. Uh, you have your Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and Para 3. These are both the uh, Knife Center exclusives with the uh, crew wear and the uh, Smooth G10, I believe they call it. I don't think they call it polished. I think that's what I have been accidentally referring it to the smooth g10 they are a bit different in finish um i bought this one so this is a little bit older i think this one's i probably had about five months this is less than that this was a a gift from a viewer which thank you very very much you guys see these on the channel all the time because i use them as size comparisons they're currently not available both were in that 150 dollar range i'm not sure if they're coming back or not i've heard both so um i've heard they're coming back i've heard that they're not they're going to do something different next time. I don't know. We'll see. But I hope they do because this is definitely my favorite version of both of these knives. I love crew wear. Holds an edge really well, but it's it seems to not be quite as difficult to sharpen as like D2 and stuff like that. Corrosion resistance has been fine. I've used the EDCI on them, and as you can see, both of them have nothing on them. Uh, I will say that even though I like the PM2 better, I do carry the Para 3 more. Uh... I've just, I don't know what it is I don't like about the Para 3. It's ugly, I guess, is probably the main thing. I just don't like the look of it at all. It looks just squished. And I I was still mad about that. You know, the pocket clip is just ridiculous. This does have a deep carry clip on it now. This is a rather beat up MXG gear one that I had around that I tried poorly to polish. I am going to get off my butt and buy a proper Casey Lynch deep carry clip for it. I use it enough now. It deserves it. I'm ordering a clip for something else uh, in the next day or two so I might as well just get it at the same time this is actually the clip that came with this one when the the nice guy sent it to me but I realized this is a PM2 uh, Casey Lynch clip so I put it on the PM2 and dug out this old one for now on the pair of three but the PM2 I carry it a fair bit but not a lot the and the pair of three I carry a bit more but still not a ton but these both these knives still get a lot of use why uh, because, as you see in the videos, they're my size comparison knives. Therefore, they are always out on my desk. So when I need to grab something, I grab it. When a family member sticks his, sticks his or her head in my door and says, Hey, I need a knife, I grab one of these because they're there. So yeah, um, everyone in my home knows how to operate a compression lock. So I think it's a valuable skill. It's a valuable skill to teach your, your kids and your spouse and stuff. So <laughs> so they all know how to do that because I can them these all the time. And they've the crew wear has held up well. As I said, no corrosion. The blade centering is still great on them. I always maintain that, and Spider Co. denies it, that they do a better job with QC on their um, exclusives. But I think uh, it's pretty hard to deny that they do because every one of their exclusives I've gotten has been 
dead on perfect. Most of the regular ones have been pretty perfect too, but they're always a bit smoother. They're always just a bit better. So, and I always recommend that. If you, by the way, I recommended it to a guy when I was at Blade HQ and he was looking for a, a PM2 and he's debating between an S110V standard one and the S35VN that's the uh, distributor exclusive now, the tan one you can get almost everywhere all the time. But it, um, I said, yeah, get the exclusive one. It's going to be better. And he did compare the two, and it was that one was smoother. So, and that's what he bought. So, anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is just a little little update. This went a lot longer than I expected it to. I apologize, but I thought this would be like a nine minute video. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. You guys like all these multi update videos. So, it's going to be a while before I do another one because, like I said, I'm I'm rotating stuff out, and uh, so it's going to be a bit before I get another five or six together that I've had for long enough. So. Hope this holds you over for a while, because it's going to be a bit. I've been Brian. Have a good one.